What's up, everybody? It's your good man, Tone Space. This right here is about the Mandela effect, about a particular Mandela effect that makes me a believer that something out of the conventional is the cause of the effect that is known as the Mandela effect. And that's what I'm going to discuss here. And you might find it mind blowing, so stick around. Now, just as a little preface for those not familiar with the Mandela effect, you're under a rock or whatever in this timeline. It's based on, um, it's named after Nelson Mandela, um, South African leader, who was thought to have died in prison sometime in the late 80s. But as a lot, or hopefully all of you know, he actually passed away, I believe, in 2013 and did not die in prison. He was released from prison sometime after and passed away in 2013. When he passed away, mass amount of people were like, wait a minute, didn't he die like in the 80s in prison or something? And his wife took over and a whole bunch of different uh, things that people recall. And that right there is the Mandela effect. The Mandela effect is 100% real because all it is by definition is an effect. That effect you feel when there's something that you thought was one way throughout history, be it a product, a brand, a name, a logo, a person in popular culture. You have a lot of people that claim Mandela effects in their personal lives with people they, they know. Um, it goes as far as uh, geographic regions on maps that people thought were in one place that's in another place or totally new uh, geographic locations that they've never heard of before. And they're like, where, where is that? And then you look through history and you find that these things have always existed. So it's, it's clear to make that distinction. Like I'll give an example. Let's say um, a logo of a product is looks different. Like let's take the Volvo logo. That's a popular Mandela effect related to a logo. The logo of the car manufacturer, um, Volvo. It looks a certain way now. And a lot of people, myself included, when we look at it, we're like, wait a minute. I don't remember the logo looking quite like this. So logical people may just come to the idea well maybe throughout the years they changed the logo especially if companies have been around for decades hundred years whatever right however even when you look through history if you look up the way that that logo looked when the company first came out all the way up until present time that logo still looks the way that the volvo logo looks today you understand so it's not as simple as um, something has changed and if you look at it, in, at it and you look it up in the past, you'll find that old way that you knew it to be. Um, Jif peanut butter, another example. A lot of people remember Jiffy peanut butter. If you go through the history of Jif peanut butter existing, it's always been Jif and there's never been a Jiffy. That's just to give an example. So that's the Mandela effect in short. It's something that we see in our lives, our daily lives, often, quite often, in reference to pop culture. Pop culture, political things, things that people uh, widely know in the media. More often than not, reported Mandela effects are changes related to that. Gorton's Fisherman Fish Sticks, as opposed to Gordon's Fisherman Fish Sticks, things like that, right? So that's what the Mandela effect is just to give some preface and that's you know its inception what it was named after i believe it was a woman named fiona broom in i think they say around 2008 or 9 that coined the term mandela effect and from there it's taken off that in itself is even a mandela effect because i thought i recognized the mandela effect only being coined its name and taking off from like, I think 2012, 2013, from around when Mandela effect, I mean, when Nelson Mandela died, I thought it started then as far as having its name and then its, you know, continual popularity through culture in general, right? But no, you look it up now, you look up the history of the Mandela effect, it's sourced back to as early as 2008, eight or nine, something like that. So it could get very trippy, it could get very intricate. There's so many things that people see you know, have some fun, look up the Mandela Effect. I've done a video on it back in 2015 when it wasn't as popular as it is now. I may repost that or I may even, you know, recap some of the points I made because it was a pretty good video. So I'll see if I could uh, repost it. Anyway, pre preface over, right? Now to the meat and potatoes. This particular Mandela Effect 
makes me a believer that there's something unconventional as the cause of the Mandela effect, right? And it is this one right here. I'm going to play it for you. A lot of people are familiar with this. Check this out. Oh. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. That's it right there. Houston, we have a problem. Iconic line from the movie Apollo 13, 1995, starring uh, Tom Hanks, also a popular uh, character in another Mandela effect that um, is the movie, um, what's the movie, uh, Forrest Gump. There's a Mandela effect related with that as well. Uh, life is like a box of chocolates as opposed to life was like a box of chocolates as it is in this current reality now the reason why i find this mandela effect so compelling and so telling that there's something unconventional we'll just use the term unconventional going on with the mandela effect is related to something that they in the mandela effect community for lack of another term refer to as flip-flops now, for those that don't know what a flip-flop is, in accordance to the Mandela Effect definition, is something that people notice has changed in popular culture or in whatever. It's something that we're going to use this example because this is the example. Um, a lot of people remember Houston, we have a problem. As it is now, as I just played it in the video, right? However, approximately four years ago, I recall... Houston, we have a problem. Apollo 13's line was a Mandela effect because it changed to Houston, we've had a problem approximately four years ago. And anytime, and I remember I was deep looking it up. A lot of people were looking it up. They tried to find old VHS tapes. They would repost their own collection to see what it says there and to go beyond YouTube clips and everything like that. And in every instance that people could find, the line said houston we've had a problem pull out an old 1995 1996 up 1996 apollo 13 vhs tape you pop it in you play it it said houston we've had a problem not houston we have a problem right that was about four years ago then what happened shortly after that maybe a few months later you look up the apollo 13 iconic line and it's what you just saw here. It's back to saying, Houston, we have a problem. Go back to your 1996 VHS tape. Pop that tape in again. Play that line back. You just heard months ago, it said, Houston, we've had a problem. You were like, wow. Play it again. It's going to say, Houston, we have a problem, just the way you remember it. And those in the Mandela Effect community refer to that as a flip-flop, meaning it's something that you thought was one way, it changed, you were like, oh wow, it changed, what's going on here? And then sometime after that, it changed back to what you initially thought it was. Two more notable flip-flops that I've noticed since studying the Mandela Effect. The spelling of Hillary Clinton's name. I don't even know what it is now, if it's uh, two L's or one L in Hillary's name first name hillary but whatever it officially is one time it changed either an l was added or removed and people were like wow i thought her name was spelled this way whatever whatever and then sometime shortly after that the name is back to either one or two l's whatever it initially was now what makes flip-flop so compelling is that it's harder it's a lot harder to say that these are just uh mental brain farts if you will or just mental mess ups mishaps or your mind filling in a blank i think it's called confabulations or something like that it's harder to say that i mean you could say that on a distant memory you could say okay the the berenstain bears books you had you recall it being berenstain bears but that was back in 82 so maybe you're wrong maybe you're just familiar with seeing the name steen or stein and then it just kind of like 
compiled up and, and, and overlaid your original memory of the Baron Stain Bears books, and now you know you just assuming it was Steen or maybe the author. I think, and I do believe that is the case. I think one of the author's name is actually Baron Stein or Steen, because Baron Stain Bears is how everyone knows the uh, iconic. There I go with the iconic word again, how people know that uh, series of children books. They know it as the Baron Stain Bears, but more people than not recall it as Baron Steen Bears, at least from what I've heard vocally or textually express themselves is what they remember, right? So if that was back in 82, it's a lot easier to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I just messed up. I got it wrong. Or someone else could say that to someone else. But the thing about a flip-flop is it now takes this memory and it brings it closer to your recollect to your recollection. If in 2018, 2019 is when I first saw the um, Apollo 13 line change, that's so recent. And I recall, I, I could recap all the details, me going on forums, YouTube videos and everything. And I could say with certainty, I recall with 100% certainty that the line in the Apollo 13 movie at that time was Houston, we've had a problem. Just how I played this Houston, we have a problem video. I played it back then. It said Houston, we've had a problem. But wait a minute. That's not even everything as to why Houston, we or we've had a problem to me is the most compelling Mandela effect and the most telling that there's something unconventional going on. No, there's another thing that they call in the Mandela effect community as residue. And what residue is, is our traces of the old version that you knew something to be. So let's say if um, the Monopoly guy, the guy on the Monopoly, um, a lot of people remember him having a monocle. He doesn't have a monocle now. You go back into the 30s when the uh, mascot was first created and unveiled, you look, no monocle, right? What residue is, is let's say there's a Monopoly costume where you could play the Monopoly guy, and in that costume they have the, mo the monocle, right? Another one, that's residue, like little signs and cues and or leftovers or residue that reflect the memory that a lot of people recall as opposed to its change. Another one, Another, I'm going to bust out the iconic word again. Iconic line by um, Darth Vader. No, I am your father. Talking to Luke Skywalker. A lot of people recall it being Luke, I am your father. Residue in that example would be the many t-shirts that were printed that said Luke, I am your father. I'll get even deeper for y'all. Residue with that would be... um. James Earl Jones himself sitting down in an interview talking, recapping his iconic line and he says something to the effect of when I got that script and I read Luke, I am your father I was astounded, I was it blew my mind, such a plot twist the actor that played Darth Vader himself recalled the line as Luke Luke, I am your father that's what we call residue so now ladies and gentlemen I'm going to unveil the residue of this Apollo 13 movie line that I recall and many people recall having been changed to um, Houston, we've had a problem as opposed to Houston, we have a problem. But just to set the point home, let's run that little clip back real quick, shall we? This is what, what it did is you now. Do? Nothing, I stirred the tanks. Whoa. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Now check out this residue. This right here, you won't be able to read the entirety of the title, but it's called, this is um, an inter internet web page about the 20 most misquoted movie lines of all time, right? And as you can see, look, look what's at the top of the list. That very line I was talking about, Darth Vader, or maybe that's just a promo, but... The Darth Vader line, Luke, I am your father, changing to no, I am your father. They're showing that. They're showing that as a misquoted line that people misquote. Okay, fair enough. They're citing out all the people 
that recall it being one way, maybe all you meant, uh, Mandela effect enthusiasts that thought it was something strange. Look, we screenplay this uh, uh, website right here. They're there to set the record straight. The other one I mentioned, Forrest Gump. Misquote, Mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. Actual quote, Mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. Wizard of Oz. I'm not sure I know that one. Jaws. We're going to need a bigger boat. A lot of people remember you're going to need a bigger boat. And you see they're right there to let you know what the real deal is, right? But let's mosey down. Let's let's scroll on down to the star of the show on this thing. Apollo 13. Misquote Houston. What? what? Misquote Houston. We have a problem. The actual quote. Uh, Houston we've had a problem so that's your residue right there I, and this site has been up ever since i noticed it changed back i've noticed this website show the quote wrong it shows the quote the way that it was when i and many other people those four or five years ago recall it changing to we've had right so whatever was going on at that time in that reality that timeline whatever the cause of the Mandela effect is these guys or whoever runs this web page was in sync, was in tandem with that reality. And they said that the misquote was Houston, we have a problem. And the actual quote, ah, Houston, we've had a problem. So all of that together is what makes this particular Mandela effect the most compelling, in my opinion, and the most telling that there's something something funny going on so like share it subscribe it if you do like it right leave your comments let me know if you want me to go deep on this i did do a video some years ago i have a whole lot of uh interesting things to say about the mandela effect what i believe the cause is um why it has a frequency with some people more than others why it might be regional based all types of stuff so if you'd like to see that just let me know let me know what you thought about this video if you agree if you agree that there does seem like you know something interesting going on if you're one of those people those four or five years ago that noticed the change to houston we've had a problem and you know for a fact that you saw it everywhere you pulled out your tape from 96 you popped it in and said houston we've had whatever the case holler at me catch y'all later